Hello and welcome to the section of the Trig and Pre-Calculus Tutor. Here we're going to start to talk about the so-called double angle identities or double angle formulas. Uh, you'll see why they're called double angle uh, here in a minute. And I have to say the double angle identities do pop up quite a bit, especially in physics when you're dealing with projectiles that are flying through the air and you're talking about the angles there. So these things will definitely pop up as time goes on. They're not that lengthy or long, so I think you'll be you know, pleasantly surprised at, uh, that these guys don't look too complicated. So these are called the double angle identities. Double angle. All right. So the first one is what if you have sine of 2 theta, so 2 times theta, that's why it's called double angle, and that's equal to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So what it really means is that if you have an angle and you multiply it by 2 and take the sine, it's kind of like the 2 can kind of come out and it becomes 2 times sine of angle times the cosine of the angle. And if you remember, we actually had this problem uh, to sort of work with and prove in the last section. We sort of proved that it was true using other identities. So lots of these identities are kind of interrelated. You know, there's so many identities, but it turns out, you know, you can derive identities from other identities. So we're getting into a little bit of overlap here. This was something that we proved in a problem in the last section, but it's an important identity all by itself. Um, we have a similar double angle identity for cosine. Now this one has several, <clears throat> several things that we can set it equal to. Cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta. That works. Uh, we could also write it as 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of theta. We could also write it as 2 times the cosine squared of theta minus 1. So these are all valid equality. So if you see something like this in a problem, you can simply simplify it into this form. If you see something like this, you can simplify it into this form. You know, things that come in handy when you're doing lots of equations and problems. Tangent of 2 theta is 2 times the tangent of theta over 1 minus the tangent squared of theta. And those are the double angle identities. And I have to say, these, these, these do pop up. I'm not telling you to memorize them because it's I don't have them memorized. But you need to know that, hey, if I have two times the angle or a double angle, you know that's going to be useful. Not so much if you're calculating the sine of pi over 4. I mean, that's not so much what it's useful for. But if you have an equation where you know, you're modeling something, and what you get in the end is sine of 2 theta or sine of 2x, or if you get some relation like this, 2 times the sine times the cosine of the same angle, and you need to simplify that, then you can greatly simplify it by changing it into a double angle. So it's just like anything else. In algebra, we simplify expressions and terms. These are ways to simplify expressions and terms also. Now to get started, what if we had something like, uh, if we wanted to prove that sine of 10 times theta was equal to 2 times the sine of 5 theta uh, times the cosine of 5 theta. How would we do that? Well, the first thing we notice is that we have sine of 10 theta, um, but the double angle only applies if you have sine of 2 times an angle. So you need to rewrite this to fit that situation. So we have sine of 2 times 5 theta. This is the, the double angle. The angle is 5 theta, you're doubling it like this. You have to make it fit that form. So 2 times whatever your angle is, you just write it as 2 times the sine of the angle times the cosine of the angle. So in this case, we'll write it as 2 times the sine of the angle, in this case it's 5 theta, times the cosine of the same angle, 